Welcome, Representative Balweg. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much for the invitation. So you are the chair of the Assembly's Task Force on Suicide Prevention. Your committee has looked into this issue across our state. Can you give us some perspective on how bad the issue is in our state, and then how did we get there? Actually, when it comes to averages, we're mm -hmm. uh, just a little bit higher than the national average, but we thought that this was a very important topic to take a look at to figure out where the silos are, where we can work together as a state in many different areas, regions, and the state being a partner to do a better job because even though we are not that much different than the national average, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we're doing the best we can for, for all our, our constituents, all our people mm -hmm. in the state. Okay, so you're saying with suicide, that's one issue, but what about the mental health issue in our state? What has your task force found? Well, when it comes to mental health, Wisconsin really is a leader in some of the, some of the things we've been doing. Uh, the first task force on mental health was back in 2014. So we've been able to move on from, from that area. And, and we've heard from other states that we do, we are a leader in many of these issues. Some of the things that other states that have had to tackle when they wanted to talk about suicide prevention, we already have in place. We've done a lot when it comes to uh, school safety in the package that came out last year. One of the things that they talk about in suicide prevention was also the idea of trauma-informed care that Wisconsin has been moving forward with in the, in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing we need to think about when it comes to suicide prevention is the stigma regarding just reaching out for help when it comes to behavioral health and encouraging uh, everyone uh, that their friends and family should be asking for help if needed. Mm -hmm. And that's a perfect uh, entree into the reason why that PBS and Milwaukee PBS has taken a closer look at this. Our documentary, Kids in Crisis, You Are Not Alone, you mm -hmm. saw that and it had four young people speaking honestly and candidly about their struggles with mental health and the challenges that they've had and even thoughts of suicide. You saw that documentary. They really came forward. What saw, what did you see in that documentary and what struck you and how did it inform the work that you've been doing on the task force? Well, the task force did focus on three different areas, uh, veterans and law enforcement, um, farmers and youth. And what we did with the uh, documentary, actually doing a screening at one of our public hearings, the one that we held in Ripon College, to focus on youth, both K-12 and higher post-secondary higher education. And we had a screening of the documentary. The thing that, um, that these young people have uh, put together in trying to show their resiliency and the things that the PBS documentary has helped us do is, in a very concise way, gone through their struggles uh, how that started, how they are continuing to uh, address those situations, and how they've really become advocates when it comes to suicide awareness, especially for youth. What they've been doing in their own schools, um, promoting peer-to-peer -peer organizations and actual resiliency training also. They are just a delight to, to work with, and I think we're very appreciative that they've been able to step forward and talk about this in a way that will relate to young people. So what I'm hearing from you is that the Milwaukee PBS documentary put it into a more of a nutshell that people can try to see themselves into, whereas it's such a vast spectrum, but within mm -hmm. that documentary, they covered the spectrum in a way that's maybe not resonated with other people before. Exactly, to, for them to be able to tell their personal stories and lived experience. When it comes to legislators, we do react to those stories, and those are very impactful. And so the, the process of the task force is to take those stories and what we've heard from those young people, farmers, other people in the communities, as to how we can make things better for the next person that maybe has that uh, behavioral health concern, that suicidal ideation. Mm -hmm. What worked for them and what they suggest, we could maybe do better. 
and it really connected because you've invited our producers who produced that mm -hmm. documentary and the young people who were featured in the documentary, you invited them to Madison. Why did you do that? Because I think that the, uh, the general population and the rest of the legislature and staff in Madison should have the same opportunity that our task force had when these young people came up to Ripon College and testify and show the documentary to our task force. Because I think, again, it is something that will resonate with the legislatures, uh, which, with the legislators on the importance, uh, how these are just not the, the statistics, the numbers, mm -hmm. the personalities of these young people and how they've moved on and, and working on being successful in their own way. And I think the other thing that it really shows, what I was really impressed is uh, the support that they had and how that should also resonate with young people that are struggling to, to see these examples of young people that have been able to survive and move on and uh, find their next path in life. Mm -hmm. And that's what their presence you're hoping will accomplish when they come to Madison. Right. They're going to be uh, there for the screening. They're going to be participating in a panel with myself uh, Representative Doyle, who's the vice chair of the task force. Also, your um, uh, producer and uh, Rory, who did the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the front person mm -hmm. for the documentary, so that we can have a, a really good conversation, have members of the legislature uh, ask them questions and find a way to relate personally to what their struggles have been and, and how we can possibly help through policy in Madison. As you're mentioning, you're talking about the people who are on this task force. It's a bipartisan effort, and I think that's something that gets very lost in today's politics. So is, this is something that's good to see. And how you're coming together to combat this problem that really seems insurmountable. It seems like, where do you start? You know, because there's so many elements to it. Um, what, how do you get to consensus on a bipartisan basis? How do you find it in this issue? Well, we started out by just trying to find out what was currently happening in Wisconsin from the state standpoint through our Department of Health Services, for between our Department of Ag and Consumer Protection, um, through our Department of Public Instruction. What are they all doing? And I think the, the purpose, one of the purposes of the task force is to figure out how we can all work together to maximize those, that expertise, those resources. Also speaking with advocates that have the lived experience, who are seeing what's happening around the nation, what's working, what's not working. How do we get together working on the, the same page? I think that's what is important mm -hmm. as part of the task force. There will be um, a variety of ideas that come out of this. What we're hoping to focus on is those that can truly be bipartisan, that we can all get behind uh, maybe it isn't going to be everything that everybody would want, but I think we'll come up with a pretty good package of things that will move this whole concept of suicide prevention forward in Wisconsin. Well, why was this the issue that brought people together on both sides of the aisle in the legislature? Well, there's been a variety of task forces that have gone on over the last couple of years. In 2014, there was mental health. Uh, since then, there's been... Um, foster care, Alzheimer's and dementia. Uh, this year there's one on adoption, there's one on water quality. This happened to be something that was an interest of mine uh, that my office started researching almost two years ago. And we started developing what kind of policy initiatives could we bring forward to the legislature. And in talking with the speaker about it, we thought this would be a perfect, uh, a perfect idea for a task force to bring more members together to take a look at what is actually happening uh, in this particular area. Something that we can do in a bipartisan fashion moving forward. I think it's important for all of us to realize that whether we're Republicans or Democrats, at the end we all have concerns over our fellow Wisconsinites that are suffering from from suicidal ideation, from mental health crisis. Is there anybody on this task force that has a personal connection to this? 
Well, there are several, and uh, a couple of them have mentioned it, and I let them add that. I have I have no um, personal um, uh, personal story to tell when it comes to that. Just a just a basic interest in moving forward in what's best for Wisconsinites when it comes to uh, mental health. One of the things we've heard in uh, all our discussions is from the 2014 task force onward is the stigma regarding uh, behavioral health issues. Our meeting in Eau Claire just a couple of weeks ago, people started talking about normalizing the discussion around uh, behavioral health. And I think that is the direction we should be moving into, understanding that people need help, whether it uh, has to do with some kind of chronic uh, health condition that they may have or something on the behavioral health spectrum that there is help for and, and find ways that we can um, encourage people to, to reach out. Has the task force found why there is that stigma in today's day and age? That's a, that's a good question. I think that is something that is typically uh, misunderstood by many people, that there is treatment. That's why I think one of the things that we're encouraging people to get involved in is the QPR training that we've, we're going to be doing at some of our task forces and, and when it, we roll this out on the uh, 25th uh, at the state capitol. QPR is uh, question, persuade, refer. It's considered the CPR of mental health. And the more people that we have understanding what the, the questions are, um, how, to, how to understand some of the comments that people may, may make in casual conversation, they could be clues to someone that really needs to be encouraged to seek some, some counseling or some treatment. Mm -hmm. And you alluded to later this month that the task force has invited um, some policy recommendations perhaps mm -hmm. are going to come from this to improve mental health based on some of the findings and what was seen in the documentary Kids in Crisis. Mm -hmm. How did what you saw influence perhaps any of this policy discussions that you'll be having that we'll find out about later on this mm -hmm. month? Well, I think that's, that's why we uh, um, put the task force meetings together in such a way that we could focus on particular areas. Uh, the Kids in Crisis documentary with the panel with uh, several of the youth from the documentary came together in Ripon. We also had the Department of Public Education there. We had folks from UW System there. Others that work mm -hmm. with youth both in K-12 and higher ed. Mm -hmm. So working with all of them see where they are in their own areas of expertise, but how can we bring them together? Uh, some of the things that Barrett talked about is a peer-to-peer um, -peer group that she started in her high school. Now she's off to college, of course, mm -hmm. but there are several organizations that our schools are um, using uh, that are peer-to-peer -peer organizations that we're, that's possibly a way that we can endorse more of this conversation when it comes to youth. And would that be one of the policy recommendations? Could you talk about some of them? What are some of these policy recommendations that you're perhaps going to talk about later on this month? Well, right now we're asking the uh, members of the task force to come together to really listen to what they've heard, what they think is important that has come forward. There is um, limited time in this legislative session to get some things done. So we want to glean from the uh, members what their priorities are and come up with that list based on that collaboration. What would you want to see done? Well, I think I'm going to defer to the members of the task force first and uh, see if we can't come up with a, a, a comprehensive but list of priorities for the, for the task force. All right. Could you share any of the priorities, what they may be? I'm afraid we're going to hold off on that for, for right now until we get to uh, um, that opportunity to have that discussion with the, with the members. Okay. Well, thank you very much. State Representative Joan Balweg, thank you for being here, and thank you for um, your time and for taking the time to watch Kids in Crisis. You're not alone.
Well, thank you very much for having us, and thank you to, to you and uh, PBS and the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel for putting together such a powerful documentary. And, and you know, thank you to TJ, Rena, Alex, and Barrett for having the, having the, the strength to, to uh, move on um, through their crisis. Thank you.